Hey, if you want to support your favorite channels, join the notification squad by clicking the bell by the channel name and selecting receive all notifications. Thank you. Item number SCP-1382 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-1382 is contained off-site coordinates redacted, Lake Michigan. SCP-SC stars to remain on permanent assignment one kilometer from SCP-1382, posing as Michigan Shipwreck Research Associates vessel SS Lobster Trap. Foundation operatives embedded in local Coast Guard services are to redirect air and sea traffic away from containment site. Any civilian traffic that approaches SCP-1382 is to be detained, interrogated, and administered Class B amnesiacs pending results of said interrogation. SCP-1382-1 is a red sea mark water buoy, identical to models produced by blank blank. Registration matches existing models produced in 19 blank, but no abnormal behavior was reported until July 7, 2012. SCP-1382-1 has suffered structural damage indicative of a high-speed impact, likely from a light civilian motorcraft, but is otherwise functional and intact. The Foundation was alerted to SCP-1382 after a pattern of recent missing persons reports led them to its coordinates. In dark weather or night conditions, SCP-1382-1 flashes the International Morse Code Distress Signal SOS, at 10-second intervals. SCP-1382-1 is anchored to SCP-1382-2, which is embedded on the sea floor at a depth of blank meters. SCP-1382-2 is the remains of Blank Airlines Flight 441, a commercial passenger liner that vanished over Lake Michigan on July 2, 1973. It has suffered extensive structural damage and degradation pertinent to an uncontrolled water landing and prolonged submersion. Contained within SCP-1382-2 are 56 instances of SCP-1382-3, skeletal human remains that are believed to be the former passengers and crew of SCP-1382-2. The remains of three reported missing persons attributed to SCP-1382-1, as well as D-49581 see Incident 1382-C-2, are also contained within SCP-1382-2. The whereabouts of two passengers and two crew members from Flight 441 are currently unknown. When SCP-1382-1 becomes active, all instances of SCP-1382-3 animate, registering a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit on thermal imaging scanners. Early observations suggested that SCP-1382-3 was reliving the crash of Flight 441. The majority of SCP-1382-3 appear distressed and assuming crash positions in their seats. Continued observation has revealed a number of discrepancies, and it is the conclusion of Dr. Salvia that the passengers were distressed by events occurring parallel to the crash, and not the crash itself. Subject Number 1, SCP-1382-31, rises from the pilot's seat and appears to be fending off an unknown attacker before slumping over 1382-2's control panel and ceasing to move. Subject Number 9 drops to his knees and holds up its arms, in a posture suggesting supplication and or prayer. Subject Number 12 attempts to push his right thumb into the left eye socket of Subject Number 13, seated adjacent. Number 13 offers no resistance but appears to be screaming. Subject Number 18 leans over the back of his chair, grabs hold of and attempts to consume the left hand of Subject Number 19, managing to dislodge and swallow the distal and intermediate phalanges of the index and middle fingers. Finger bones can be seen inside Number 18's ribcage. Number 19 appears to be screaming while Subject Number 20, seated next to it, assaults Number 18 with its bare fists. Subjects number 22, number 23, and number 24 are gesturing at the left side passenger windows. Their motion suggests something is on or near the wing of the plane. Subjects number 44 and number 45 overpower subjects number 46 and number 47, both juveniles estimated to be 8 and 6 years of age respectively, and begin to consume them. 
Subjects number 53, number 54, and number 55 are identified as blank blank, blank blank, and blank blank. Reported missing during a three-month period previous to the discovery of SCP-1382. Each of them stated the K applicable to their environment and length of time submerged. When animated, all three expressed confusion and distress to their surroundings, and at the decayed condition of their own bodies. Subject number 56 is the remains of D-49581, absorbed into SCP-1382-2 during Incident 1382-C2. It is in a very early stage of decay. Number 56 expresses confusion and distress at its surroundings, as well as greater self-awareness and none of the repeating actions demonstrated by other SCP-1382-3s. Number 56 has made several efforts to escape SCP-1382-2. So far, it has attempted to extricate itself through an open window, communicate with nearby SCP-1382-3s, and to run or swim to the emergency exits. Each attempt has been unsuccessful in the time allotted. Requests to contact and or remove number 56 are pending approval. After 13 seconds of activity, all instances of SCP-1382-3 turn to face SCP-1382-1. They remain in this position until SCP-1382-1 ceases its SOS, at which point they collapse and become inert. Incident 1382-C-1 Forward the following transcript details Dr. Salvia's attempts to establish communication with SCP-1382-1 using the Sea star signal light at a distance of 800 meters. Begin log. 0039 hours. Dr. Salvia, hello. SCP-1382-1, SOS. Respond. There is an uncharacteristic two-minute pause before SCP-1382-1 flashes a response. Help. Who are you? Mary, SOS. In log 0103 hours. Closing statement. SCP-1382-1 ceases activity at this point. Mary is believed to be Mary Blank, a passenger aboard Flight 441. Incident 1382-C2. Interviewed D-49581, chosen for his knowledge of boating and international Morse code. Interviewer Dr. Salvia aboard the SCPSC Star. Forward D-49581 was instructed to board a rubber dinghy and approach SCP-1382-1. Weather conditions nominal. Log begins at 2217 hours, when D-49581 was within 100 meters of SCP-1382-1. Begin log 2217 hours. Hey Doc, can you read me? Loud and clear, D-49581. Report your status. I can see the buoy. No people, though. Are you sure there's someone out here? Proceed as directed, D-49581. Fine, fine. Hello, anyone home? D-49581 raises his signal flashlight and flashes hello from his light. SCP-1382-1 does not respond. Continue transmitting, D-49581. D-49581 continues flashing the prepared signal. Here to help, K. Any response, D-49581? SCP-1382-1 begins a new signal, translated later as hunger. What the hell? Closing Statement A sudden sage wave, estimated to be three meters tall, surges up between SCP-1382-1 and the dinghy. Contact with D-49581 lost an impact. SCP-1382-1 ceases activity. A search of the area reveals D-49581 signal flashlight and fragments of his chest-mounted camera, but no other debris. Incident 1382-C3 Forward. 32 hours after Incident 1382-C2, Dr. Salvia attempts to re-engage Morse code communication with SCP-1382-1. Begin log 2320 hours. SCP-1382-1 SOS Dr. Salvia Hello Without pause, help How? SOS Are you Mary Blank? SOS What are you? SOS Is Blank with you? Blank is the real name of D-49581, almost five minutes passed before SCP-1382-1 replies. Hunger Where is Blank? Hunger, SOS. 
End log, 2351 hours.